All right. Let's see. It looks like we are ready to get started. And even though my video is obviously not doing what it's supposed to do, uh, we are going to go ahead and see about getting this rolling. Because I promised you I would provide you with some very interesting, very dynamic, and some time-sensitive cryptocurrency information. As you know, I'm Rashid Hill, and I am the altcoin enthusiast. I am the founder of L3 Coaching Solutions and Strategies, and I am a very uh, staunch advocate of the blockchain technology, cryptocurrency, altcoins, as well as Internet of Things. So I believe that we are in the midst of something that is very incredible, something that is awesome, something that is meaningful, and something that is inevitable to our future. So if you are in the midst of an, an amazing opportunity, why would you not take advantage of what's coming while we are literally at the tip of the iceberg. And I say that, but the tip of the iceberg means this technology has been out, has been around, has been utilized or tested anyway. And it has some actual use cases since 2008, literally 2008, 2009 timeframe people started to understand a little bit more about blockchain technology and how it supports the payment system and the financial sector as well as now it's it's more about privacy and, and, and anonymity and speed as well as you have immutability. So without further ado, this is what I want to do. I am going to talk a little bit about the top five to ten coins that you should be looking at for 2018. So right now, here's what I want to do. I want to give you a little uh, insight to what I'm looking at so that you can understand a little bit more about the cryptocurrencies that I will be discussing with you. We're going to talk about Sonom. Sonom. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Sonom. We're going to talk a little bit about Cloak Coin. We're going to talk about Basic Attention Token, BAT. We're going to talk a little bit about PBL or the Publica Coin. We're going to talk about Engine, E-N-J, Engine Coin. We're going to talk about Lisk, Lisk Coin. And <clears throat> there are probably another 15 or so that I actually follow that I'm watching very closely and some that I actually have um, put some money into and I've seen some very wonderful returns. Therefore, I am actually taking the opportunity to speak with you about some of these things today. Now, just so you understand who I am, what I do, um, like I said, I am the founder of L3 Coaching Solutions. I'm the author of a personal development book called Eight Ways to Be Ten Times Better. And about a year and a half ago, it was, um, I think it was July, June or July, almost two years ago, a good friend of mine, business partner out of Texas, and I'm here in San Diego, he actually had introduced me to the idea of cryptocurrency, which I didn't understand at the time, nor did he. But we were in business together. We were always looking for a great opportunity. And so at this particular juncture, we were very interested in that next technology, that next thing that would, um, you know, we could get we could get at the tip up. And, you know, you're always wanting to figure out how do I get in ahead of the curve? How do I get into something that is cutting edge, you know, um, that's going to take off, not after it takes off? You know, there's a bell curve in business. And. And if you if you hit the top of the curve, then all you could do is basically go down. But if you kind of catch it at the one quarter mark or between one quarter one eight uh, to one sixteen, if you can hit it up in that area, then you're you're doing pretty good. Or even two thirds mark, you're going to be able to capture a, a a big portion of the momentum, which will increase your profits uh, in the short term and long term, because 
when institutional money gets behind any investment or startup or actual business or technology, then we know that it's going to be in a different area and the public kind of comes in at a later time. So we were always looking for a way. How do we get into something before it kicks off? You know, I, that, that perfect IPO. And now we finally had an opportunity. We didn't fully understand it because at the time there was um, Bitcoin had been out for some time. By 2014, Bitcoin was already, you know, basically doing its thing. Ethereum was just kind of a baby at that point, and, you know, Litecoin, Dash, all those were really not really on the radar. So at that time, Bitcoin was about $600 per coin. So we were like, nope, 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 that's just way too much. We're not even looking at that. Well, what we did, though, we were interested in the seventh disruption, which was the banking industry. That made sense. That was powerful. So, you know, there was a gentleman um, – um, man. Oh, my gosh. Ah, if I think of his name, I'll bring it up. But, yeah, there was a gentleman that actually we, we worked with in another company. And and so when he actually wrote this sub disruption, he was talking about the banking industry and the new currency. Then we decided that, hey, we need to look into this. We looked into it. It made sense. Did some more research. And after about two or three months, we decided that, hey, let's go ahead and jump in. Well, there was groups, you know, that were jumping in. And so this is my first introduction to cryptocurrency. At this point, though, I fully, I just really didn't know where to go to get information, didn't know what was true, what was false. And so since my partner, you know, me and him had worked together, then I said, hey, man, I trust you. Let's go ahead and do it. Well, he got on in. He, he dove in and, um, you know, started seeing some results. And so I decided to go ahead and, and, and invest in some educational packages with the company and start learning about cryptocurrency and, and, and financial literacy and investments and trading and Forex and um, interest and compound interest and the banking industry and unbanked and the bank and the underbanked. And, you know, I was like, wow, this is powerful. So I was taken by that. And what I understood at that point was this is something that everybody can afford, but at the same time, this is coming fast, and we all need to be part of this. So I took it upon myself to learn as much as I could about cryptocurrency and how it worked and how it functioned, you know, to understand the mining process and the blockchain that runs this particular uh, protocol and trying to just get as much information as I could. And so that's kind of how I started down this path. So over a year, like I said, almost two years ago, um, got involved. And, you know, initially I spent about $1,500. And in three months, uh, that had tripled. So I said, wow. So at that point, I put another uh, about 8500 in it. And so the initial uh, investment within that first three or four months, I had, I had put about ten grand in and, so that was, let me see, three months, four, I think at about six months, I saw a continuous flow uh, of return. Now, I had no intention on taking it out because it's a long-term play. The money's there, and let's see where it goes. So at that point, I think my initial return was about 1500 I had about 9000 in about six months on, on that 1500 and then when I had put the other um, 8,500 in, after about, that's about 11 months, um, I had a return of about six figures on that. And so I had taken some out in order to go ahead and reinvest. And so I was a true believer at that point. So I felt like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and spread the word. And so here I am about a year, almost two years later, knowing that it works, still kind of, you know, working through the kinks, trying to understand, um, focused on my speaking and focused on my coaching and, and building, you know, some online programs and radio show and things like this. So, you know, I just, it's an investment. So I wasn't doing anything. I was just letting it ride and it was growing. So that, that was kind of my initial experience. So, Basically, I've taken it upon myself. I started studying more about ICOs, the initial coin offerings, to understand these startups and, and what's, you know, what's the, what's the, uh, 
what's the startup doing? You know, why is it raising so much money in order to get off the ground? You know, is it established? Is it going somewhere? You know, so I start reading white papers, and understanding terms and conditions and what we can invest in, what we can invest in. You know, as U.S. citizens, there are certain things you can invest in. So these are some of the things that I had to understand. Trial and error, you know, some things I invested in and found out that I couldn't invest in it. And so they give you a refund. Um, so these are things that I want to make sure that other people don't make these same mistakes. And so I learned a little bit about that. Then I started learning more about, you know, dApps, decentralized apps. I started learning a little bit more about the difference between proof of work and proof of, of stake. And then came along proof of awareness. There was a, a proof of, you know, obviously proof of concept is something that we already know. There was, um, there's POS, which is proof, you know, uh, point of sale, which point of sale is interesting because one of the first payment coins that I was looking at is, uh, Cryptarium and Kasha, these two, uh, and, and Stack came along a little later. They were basically saying that they could convert cryptocurrency into fiat currency at the point of sale. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, that's really what's needed uh, at the end of the day. So to understand that here are companies that are creating solutions to problems that have plagued the cryptocurrency field for about eight years. It's very powerful. So I was very interested in understanding what companies are doing the best work to provide us with usability. So I can honestly tell you that this is a powerful industry. This is, this is not even, haven't even caught on. I mean, this is, this is so amazing. And, and I definitely want you to take advantage of the information that I put out to you. But I'm going to give you this disclaimer so you will know right up front that I'm an enthusiast. I'm an investor myself, personally. I do not give investment advice. I am not a financial advisor. I am a certified relationship, career, and strategic intervention coach. That's what I do. And I'm a regional director at a facility here with the Department of Defense. This is who I am. This is what I do. Now, in my free time, I like to put my money where it will give me the best returns. And so I'm spreading that information to you. I'm not asking you for money, so I'm not charging you for it. So I am imparting information freely to you. You do with that information as you see fit. I'm not telling you to invest in anything. I'm only offering you information as an enthusiast in this particular technology. And I have some background in how it works because I've studied it and I've actually put my money where my mouth is. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to talk about Sonom, Cloak Coin, Basic Attention Token, Bat, PBL, Publica. We're going to talk about Engine. We're going to talk about Lisk. Lisk. And we're going to talk a little bit about Ripple and the powerhouse that it is. We're going to talk about Ethereum. We're going to talk about Verge. We're going to talk a little bit about IOTA. We're going to talk about Redcoin. We're going to talk about Tronics. Talk about Stellar Lumens. We're going to talk a little bit about Burst. Um, I might hit on Zcash if I have a moment. A little bit about ARC, Coin, Mana, and Litecoin Plus. And we'll talk a little bit about XDN. So, I know that if I went through all of those, it would take a, probably about a couple of hours. So that's not my intention. My intention is to quickly highlight you on the top five to ten powerhouses, some known, some you may not know about, some that are less than a dollar. There are, I think there's one less than a penny that I think is a, a gigantic investment or a gigantic way to earn good money. Now, here's another insight that I want you to know. We've been asked, me and I have two partners uh, in, in Chicago, one in Chicago, one in Texas, that we've been putting out good information and therefore there are people that contact us and ask us uh, for, for information on, hey, what do I do? How do I do it? So what we're doing, we're actually in the midst of putting together a basic 
uh, introduction to Bitcoin, uh, blockchain, altcoins. We're giving you just basic information because a lot of the questions are just, hey, what is it about? You know, what does it have to do with me? Uh, can I make money with this? Is it is it a bubble? You know, and that's cool. You know what? I have no problem with answering those questions. But what we're trying to do is go ahead and consolidate our information and put together uh, a program where you can actually go in and you can pull up that information and feel feel good that you're getting the right information. There's a lot of scammers out there. There's a lot of bad information put out. So what I want to do is make sure that you get the right information and not, you know, we put out, uh, not lose your money uh, at, at no, no, for no reason. So we're going to do, and by the end of January, we're going to have, a, like I said, a basic course. It's going to be more of a webinar or seminar type where it's going to be like a two-hour, um, you know, webinar. We're going to provide that information to you. And, yes, at the end of that, that webinar, then we are going to offer you an opportunity to learn more about uh, and dig a little deeper into cryptocurrency, the altcoins, what's the benefit of various altcoins over other altcoins. You know, why would I look at or recommend you, you know, dive into one coin versus the other. So it takes a little more time, takes a lot more research too. So obviously my time is valuable and that's why I'm imparting this information to you today because I want you to understand that yes, I am happy to provide you with quality information at no cost because it's free. You can go online, you can find it yourself if you so desire. Uh, but if you really wanted to get into, um, you know, kind of, hey, I have five grand, I have 10 grand, I have $200, whatever it is, and you want to make sure you do something smart with it, then we can dive deeper into the individual questions that you might have in an open forum or specifically one-on-one. And we're going to talk more about how to create um, that platform, how to create that, that, that cryptocurrency brand that gives you the best bang for your buck, gives you the best return on your particular uh, insight and, you know, value that you, you impart. So these are some of the things that we're going to do. And like I said, in late January, we'll have more advertising and promotions coming out. So please stay tuned. Come back and look for that. We'll have a, a nice seminar for you uh, that, hey, just sign up. And so we'll know who's going to be there. We got, like I said, me and two other experts are, they've been doing this longer than I have. And so very, very well versed in the cryptocurrency arena. Um, then we're going to do a level two, uh, kind of an intermediate uh, how to hands on, you know, we're going to spend some time with you. Uh, we're going to be available to you as well. Uh, videos that you can look at at any time. And we're going to talk about, you know, the, 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 your personal bank, how to create your personal bank and, you know, how to consolidate. If you, if you put your money into 10 different coins, and they have 10 different wallets, we're going to show you how to consolidate that uh, so it doesn't become so taxing on you to try to keep up with, you know, all these different currencies. So you got to understand this is similar to you got euro, you got dollars, you got pesos. You know, it's the same kind of concept. When you have different coins, you got Ripple, you got Ethereum, you got Bitcoin, you got, you know, Rushcoin, you got Burstcoin. All these have different wallets. So it's the same thing. It's no different. You know, some of them, and they're creating programs to cross over. And that's what ICO has become very important. So different levels um, of programming that we're going to be uh, starting here late January, early February. And we're going to make sure that you get the best information out there. And like I said, with advanced level three, um, we're going to get into Forex. We're going to talk about the relationship between Forex trading and or foreign exchange trading and uh, cryptocurrency trading. We're going to talk about, you know, reading charts. We're talking about um, looking at the charts and understanding, you know, the different concepts, the cups, uh, you know, different way it looks. Talk about flags and, and the flag, particular symbol. Uh, we're going to talk about support and resistance. We're talking about May, uh, MACD and the lines and when they're, you know, the, the orange lines and the blue lines, the green lines. And, um uh, you know, red lines, and we're going to give you and understand if you see that, then if you're at the advanced level and you want to understand that, then those are some of the things that we're going to talk about. And it gives you some insight into when to uh, step in 
and when to tap out. Um, when, and then you can kind of understand some of the terminology when you get into the trading. Um, you know, when somebody says a bull run or somebody says, you know, it's, it's a, it look, it's look bearish, then you'll understand if it's up or down. You know, if you should get in or get out. And that's really the key is what's your buy limit? What's your stop loss? You know, how do you set that? Um, you know, what's the market cost versus, um, you know, what's the trading cost? Um, what's the selling? What's the buying? You know, what, what, where, where, where do you fit in based upon your ability to, uh, you know, to, to, to what's your, what's, what, what do you, what do you afford? What can you afford? You know, so you can understand where you should be at as far as a person investing in cryptocurrency. So these are some of the things that we'll talk about. And like I said, there's just so much more, but we'll make available to you a whole new private, um, forum um, that gives you actual real live tips and you know what's hot right now what's coming next you know we're going to have a lot of that for a specific group that signs up with our particular course and if you sign up for all three then obviously we're going to do some one-on-one coaching with you as well so with that being said let's talk about Sonom. so Sonom is a secure and cost-effective fog supercomputer which is designed for general purpose computing from mobile app hosting to video rendering to DNA analysis. So in a nutshell, here's what's interesting about Sonom. Sonom is actually, it's like, like I said, it's a supercomputer that actually rents some of its computing space. So you could be at your home, you could have a, a computer um, and you can have a, let's say you have like a hundred terabytes of, of, of storage. Then you can you can be part of the Sonom community, and this is why they say the Ethereum Fog is is based on Ethereum's platform or Ethereum you know blockchain, and so Sonom actually offers you an opportunity to sell some of your computing power to anybody that wants to use it. Now, if there's a lot of coders out there. There's you know uh, people that do a lot of open source coding, whereas just like Google. Uh, with Google Docs or, or, or you know, on Google, they have the ability where you can share information, right? Just like a, a share drive. So here it is. This is like a share economy where everybody is sharing their particular storage space or GPU or CPU space where people can actually use that. They pay you a fee and they use some of your computing power. So this is kind of what they're doing. And Sonom actually currently, I think they are actually, um, they're doing some big things. Sonom. Let me see if I can find their um, their information though, because I believe Sonom is. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me look. Let me find that for you. Sonom is doing something. Okay. Well, anyway, I know that Sonom actually has. Um, they have a. Sonom, I thought I had that up. There it is. I'm just losing my mind. So Sonom, let me let me let me show you right quick. So Sonom has their minimal viable product, right? So MVP, minimally viable product. They have that live. So here's something about ICOs, just to give you a quick hit on ICOs. ICOs actually initial coin offerings, when these companies actually go out and do their crowdfunding, they actually create a white paper or yellow paper or black paper and they talk about you know, here's what we're doing. This is our product. This is our service. This is what we offer. And in there, they'll say, hey, we have a roadmap. We're going to create. Here's our product. And it's going to be created within six months after we close the ICO. So when you're donating your money, you, you, you're looking forward to your returns, then at least you know what's going on. So here is uh, Sonom, been around for, for a while. And they actually run on the Ethereum platform or, or blockchain. And Sonom has released its minimally viable product. It's a test net. And it's the first step to implement the decentralized computing platform, which is based on the Ethereum Fog computing platform. Now, that's pretty awesome, right? So they want people to test that out. So Sonom is a distributed supercomputer platform with a built-in marketplace where everyone can buy and sell computer power. Whether you are a hardware supplier who owns PCs, servers, or mini rigs, 
or you're just a customer who uses computational power, Sonom is the right place for you. So if you're a supplier or a customer, one or the other, then they want you to try out their new product, right? So you can try out their product and you can pay for time because it could be anybody in anywhere around the globe and and, and you're using Sonom's compute computational uh, program, so to speak. They're just offering a program or a platform, which is in the Ethereum fog. So this is just another way Ethereum is, is staying ahead of the game, staying, you know, one step ahead. People think that Ethereum is kind of laying low. But Ethereum really is probably the most used blockchain for cryptocurrencies out there. So a lot of the ICOs use Ethereum as their base. So Sonom is one. And as you can see, you can do a mine Sonom. You can use it for gaming, science, uh, artificial intelligence. The coders can use it for development, CGI rendering, which is video. So, or, or, or you know what I mean. So, here's, here's just some amazing things, right? And they even have, uh, you can use, I guess, the list coins you can use to run with that. Now, list is another one. So, let's go ahead and look at list since we already got that up. Let's go over here. Let's look at list. So, what is list? And is it a good investment? So here we see that LISC actually has been out for some time. This is 2016. But I saw this and I felt like this was a really kind of good information that would be helpful for us to understand what is LISC. So here we are. <clears throat> and real quick, LISC, which is one of my favorite coins, I've, I've done research and I found out that they are doing really some really good things. So I really love this coin and it is increasing tremendously. Um, real quick right here. So LISC is sitting at uh, $21 and it actually increased. So that's 12%. And this is literally within the last hour. Um, it's went up to 12%. Now, uh, $21. Now, just so you know, it was at 22, 23 last week, went down to about 18, and now it's going back up, which is a beautiful thing because just like any other market, the price is going to go up, price is going to go down, then the price is going to go back up. You just have to focus on the long term. So, so these are not coins that you can just pump money in and think you're just going to get this mighty, mighty return overnight. Okay. Now, not saying it's not possible yet. These are coins that actually have products and services behind them, and they're developing them as we go. All right. Now, about LISC, here's something that I want you to know. LISC is a decentralized network with its own blockchain that has been launched to enable developers to build a wide range of apps on the LISC network by developing custom side chains. You may say, what in the world is side chains? Now we're trying to understand what a blockchain is. Now you're talking about side chains. Well, with all that technical stuff in there, let me go down. Let's talk a little bit about side chains, right? So side chains in the list world or in, in the blockchain world, when a transaction happens within the blockchain, it is inevitable based on speed, based on the processing power and the computing power and the complexity of the process, there will be additional extra or uh, variables or variations of the process. And there are extra, extra, extra things that happen in the processing of cryptocurrency and um, smart contracts or digital algorithms. So when this stuff happens, what they call the extra stuff is, is side chains. So what happens with side chains if, if, if there's nothing to do with the side chain, then it becomes clutter in the system and it slows everything down. So what LISC has done is LISC has found a way to use the side chains and itemize them or categorize them in a way that it actually helps to speed the process up. So let's see a little bit about 
And I, I kind of got, there, there's a good explanation of how that works um, in layman's terms, but let me just see if it talks about it here. Okay, so it says, claiming to be the world's first modular cryptocurrency, meaning that various applications will be run on top of the list core and all decentralized apps run their own side chains. In this way, the list team hopes to keep the main chain agile and list itself will remain efficient. So they're basically, let's say you have a book and you have post-it notes. So you take these post-it notes. Now, would you rather see a book and you write notes on the pages around the edges, around the border of each page? Or would you rather see post-it notes and you make notes on the post-its and you stick them nice and neat at each page that you make the notes? So this is the same thing. Side chains are being organized in a way that they don't disrupt the reading of the book. They actually are side notes organized where you can continue to read the book and get an understanding as well. So it keeps the pace, right? So it just makes it more efficient the way they handle side chains or this disruptive um, additional portion of the process that is inevitable in the blockchain. Okay, is this a good investment? Yes, it is. So that's that's what I think about it. Um, okay, so that is a little bit about list, which is probably one of my top coins of this coming year. You would like to know why I would say that. Well, simply put, the reason why that is one of my top picks is because List put out some information recently that they were stepping back and all their work and effort has been good, but they felt that they weren't getting to where they needed to be in the time frame they needed to do it. So they actually stopped and put everything on pause and decided to go ahead and add some um, some better uh, coders and people to the technical team, and in their roadmap, there are other items, there's other products that's coming, and they want to make sure that it's done right. They want to make sure that when they come out, it's going to be amazing, and it's going to be value added. So I have a lot of respect for them for actually doing that, and so they're going to relaunch in February, and so I know just with what they've done up to this point, being one of the top companies, top ICOs from the beginning um, that did one of the most successful cryptocurrency crowd sales, like one of the most successful ICOs in, in March 2016, that they literally are doing the right things and will continue doing the right things by relaunching in, in February 2018. So I know that's going to be big, right? Okay, so they said basically they raised, they raised a lot of money. They raised uh, almost $10 million, um, and this was back in 2016. It was the fourth highest crowdfund at that particular time, the fourth highest at that particular time. So that's just incredible. And um, so talking about side chain, let's, let's define that real quick so you, you'll get a better idea. I mean, I, I kind of mentioned it before, but just so you, you really understand what I, what I mean here. So here it says, by this point, we are all familiar with blockchain, usually defined as a public ledger of all completed transactions. One problem that exists with blockchains is that it can be artificially bloated with test or fake transactions. When there are too many bad transactions, the blocks in the blockchain get full faster and slow down the network. This is a bloated network. No one likes a slow network. So List solution is the side chain. Side chains are additions to the main blockchain. Think of it like post-it notes applied to book pages. You can add more value, yet not clutter the main text. Side chains can be attached to the independent blockchains and serve as a place to put all the high volume transactions without interfering with the main blockchain. As a result, this will ensure a fast network all day long. So that's a pretty cool thing. But if you want to know more about side chains, go read the white paper. So right now, I believe LISC is probably going to be 
a full runner for at least the first quarter, and then we'll see what happens after that. But yeah, they're preparing to do some really big things and relaunch here in about a month. So I know that's going to go off really well. So who we want to look at now, let's look at Publica. So Publica, who is Publica? Publica is one of my favorites, man. Publica is just, it's, it's a passion, right? Because when I first saw their particular ICO being announced, which obviously in November, and since I've been doing this, you know, for almost a year. So this was one that I was pretty excited about. And as you can see, their initial price was ten cent, and so Publica, being um, about authors and, and and book readers, me being a, a independent author, self published, this was exciting to me. So who is Publica? Publica will be a platform for authors, readers, books of all kinds, and the people who make them and for the smart contracts to carry all kinds of transactions and exchanges for the publishing economy. So interesting as it may seem. Let's see. Publica. Publica will fuel an ecosystem of the third parties necessary to publish and promote high quality and high value books, editors, cover artists, illustrators, marketers, and so on. By backing their e-commerce transactions on the blockchain, Publica will bring trust and liquidity to the ecosystem peer to peer. To ignite the ecosystem, Publica is a platform for authors to offer their own token launches for their new books, which gives them some money, crowdfunding. Each token sold in a book's token launch represents read access to the book in an e-reader. So authors will be able to set their own advanced payments for their books negotiated with their fans and institutional backers. So that's pretty awesome, right? So Publica started out at $0.10. Cent and they ended, like I said, December 1st. Now, just to be honest with you, I actually was preparing to jump in um, in Publica and their ICO, and I was willing, you know, ready to invest a pretty good amount. Um, really excited about it, and I was still trying to understand how to move money around, how to move you know, digital currency from Bitcoin to Ethereum, how to move Ethereum to Bitcoin, how to use either one of them to invest in one of the companies. So I was still a little leery on how that worked. So I was reading in, in the Telegram chat. Um, see, like right here is Telegram chat. So I was reading in there where all of these companies, they usually put a lot of their Telegram chat and they, you know, a lot of people ask questions and answers and just really good information. Like a, it's kind of like a, like they're like a forum where they can talk to you and um, and everybody asks questions and, and you can ask technical questions. You can ask investment questions, you know, ICO questions, product questions, you know, the whole nine. Well, in there they talked about how much they were actually looking to raise in the, in the time frame. So they were actually looking to raise 40 million for their ICO and it was about a 45 day time frame. Well, a lot of the people in there, probably had, you know, been involved with ICOs before, and they says, hey, you're not going to hit your $40 million, so why don't you go ahead and drop that down to about $10 million, and we'll advertise it, you know, and basically do a bounty, which is um, basically giving out free coins for people actually um, publicizing their ICO on their social media channels, kind of like influencers doing that on Instagram and Facebook and so on and so forth. So, a lot of the people were saying, hey, come on, drop it down a little bit and we can get this thing done like right now. And so they discussed it. And a couple of days later, they come back. And it's so much information that I wasn't reading it every day. And by the time I came back, I'm reading it. And it literally said the ICO is closing in like two hours. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, what happened? You know, because I'm, I'm just thinking that, hey, we got a few days. We're good. And at that point. They had told their, their you know, investors, the, the people that were involved, hey, um, the, the, the team, you know, the, 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 uh, the potential investors, I would put it that way. And they basically said, hey, you know what? We heard you. We'll go ahead and we'll drop this from $40 million. We'll take it down to $10 million. And within two hours, they had about $11.5 million donated. And Basically, um, 
I wasn't able to get into it at the 10 cent. But what I did, as soon as it went and, and, and closed the ICO and they hit the exchange, I went on and purchased um, about 300 of them. And so I didn't get it at 10 cent, but I did get it at 20 cent. So I got it at 20 cent. And so, which was okay. Um, and today it's worth so 20 cent. And today it's ooh, 82. So pretty good deal from December 1 to December 31st. It went from 20 cent all the way to 82 cent. So it's been up and down. And right now it's a 23 percent increase, which is rather, rather good uh, based upon the market cap that they have. So their total supply that they're looking to reach, and this is the maximum that they're going to issue, is 33 million coins. So the circulating right now is 18 million. So they got over halfway. And so basically what happens is the closer they get to this number, the value goes up. When the value goes up, the difficulty rate goes up to mining the actual coins. So here we are, their volume, which is something I look at, and then their market cap. So that's not what we're talking about today, so I'm not going to get into that too much. But as you can tell, it goes up, it goes down. But, hey, it's been going up really good. So that is a big plus for us, right? Okay, so... Publica is one of my top ones as well. And I think people are starting to recognize how powerful Publica is because it's definitely uh, taken off. So who are we talking about now? This right here is probably my most favorite um, BAT, Basic Attention Token. This is based on the Brave browser. If you haven't heard about it, don't worry. I have either. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. So, as I mentioned before in another video, the, the, the basic attention token is a digital advertising token. His program, uh, this gentleman created, uh, is based upon bringing attention to digital advertising and basically maximizing your advertising dollars through the blockchain on any given website. So as mentioned, the co-founder of Mozilla and Firefox actually created this team and created this token. Okay. So the basic thing is it, it's, it's a powerful thing. And I believe that it's growing like every day. So based on information about this particular token, this particular platform, this particular technology that they've created, it is definitely a powerhouse in this industry. A lot of attention is coming to this one now. The basic attention token rapidly improves the efficiency of digital advertising by creating a new token that can be exchanged between publishers, advertisers, and users. It all happens on the Ethereum blockchain. Once again, Ethereum blockchain. So when we start talking about Ethereum before this is over, You'll understand why. The token can be used to obtain a variety of advertising and attention-based services on the Brave platform. The utility of the token is based on user attention, which simply means a person's focused mental engagement. So what they've done is focus on the user, advertiser, and publisher, and put them in this little ecosystem of sorts based upon using the basic attention token as value in their particular ecosystem. Just a, it's just a genius idea. So anyway, it's, it, you know, you can go to the website and you can check it out, but definitely one of my top picks as well. And then you can download the Brave um, search engine as well, and you can look at that. So definitely one of my top picks for 2018. <clears throat> Engine. Oh my gosh. I can't say enough about engine. Engine is so cool to me because engine is based on a, um, 
Engine is based on a gaming platform. So smart currency, cryptocurrency for gaming. So think about this for a second. This was the first coin that I looked at when I was researching ICOs and which one I was going to invest in. I mean, it was like, hmm, which one? Why would I? What am I looking at? What are the key elements? So I came up with four key elements that you must look at, you must understand, you must review um, when you're about to invest in a ICO. And we'll talk about that in the uh, advanced or intermediate course. But today we're talking about here is another key coin for the coming year, engine coin a customizable cryptocurrency and virtual goods platform for gaming. How powerful is that? Do you know how cryptocurrency um, became, evolved, was initiated? The whole idea was based on online gaming. So 2008, 2007, even before that, right? People were online gaming. You went from the Sega and the, and the, and the, and the uh, Commodore and the, and the Xbox and all that. And after people were challenging each other in the, in the living room, then finally somebody said, well, hey, let's take this online. And so I'm in Texas and you're in California or I'm in California and you're in Manila, Philippines. We could be playing each other online in one of the games. We can be doing what is it called? Um, the um, mine. What is it? Mine something. Um, what's that game called? Uh, mine something. Mine. Anyway, there's uh yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of a lot of um, a lot of different uh, a lot of different games out there. I can't believe I can't think of that particular that particular one. But anyway, um, engine is powered by the engine network. So here's the key aspect of the engine coin. There are 18.7 million gamers and hosting over 250,000 gaming communities on their platform. Now, engine was already a gaming platform. They were already doing this business. That is key when you're looking at ICOs. Are they already in this business? Or did they just decide that that was a good place to make money? They already had millions of actual subscribers that were using the engine coins anyway. So use an engine token in a online environment, and then you come back and you create an engine coin, expand your social gaming platform throughout the world to offer more virtual goods, within the gaming platform as a social currency to facilitate more engagement, that is a win-win. So when I first got this coin, I got this one at two cent per coin, at two cent per coin. And I think I got about 4,000 of them. And at two cent per coin, now it's at 18 cent per coin, as you can tell. 18 cent per coin. So it started out at 2 cent. Now it's up to 18 cent. It's going the right direction for me. So it's a win-win on engine coin. Who else are we looking at? Did we talk about cloak? We didn't talk about cloak coin yet, have we? So let's talk a little bit about cloak coin. Okay. So the cloak coin, I think, is a winner as well. Cloak coin just came up recently. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I, I just got some information about Cloak Coin. Got a tip where Cloak Coin is about to do some very interesting things. Cloak Coin is, I don't have a lot of information here, but as you can tell, it's not doing too bad. Cloak Coin is at about $30, which is really cool. Um, so what I want to show you, though, you see, it's going in the right direction. And even though it dropped off a little bit here, it's probably going to keep growing because you can see that it is going up, going down, going up, going down. 
and then it starts to go up, hit some resistance, and it comes back down. So it's about time to go back up. But anyway, right now, what we're going to do is let's go find that cloak coin because I think you're going to like this. Okay. Let's see. Cloak coin is right there. Okay. Let's talk about that for a second. One of the things that I heard about the cloak coin, like literally, I just heard about this like within the last uh, couple of days, and it is very interesting in the write up that this is a prophecy coin that nobody really is talking about. And I mean, there's over 2,000 tokens and coins out there right now. So of course, we're not gonna we're not gonna know about all of them uh, or have time to even talk about all of them. But this one. It's really interesting. And so I've kind of put it on my radar as one of the key, one of the top, one of the uh, winners in 2018. Um, Coke is one of the few strongly privacy driven cryptocurrencies out there. And privacy is the last human right we've gotten to fight for. So Cloak is also incredible because it rewards every single coin holder that wishes to participate in maintaining the cloak transaction system called Enigma. Something that none of the top cryptocurrencies do for their users. So other cryptocurrencies aren't even doing this. Now, how awesome is that? So below, they're gonna talk a little bit about the description of cloak. The source of the Enigma will be opening, or going open source, December 31st, which was yesterday. <clears throat> so everybody will be able to review the source code based on the over three years of hard work. So the hard work has paid off, and its code ticks all the boxes when evaluating the long-term suitability of cryptocurrency. So cloak, interesting, and kind of a quiet storm of sorts, because now it's starting to come on out. Okay, strong development team. They got purpose for the project, tight and active community. So there are people that, are, that actually want to use it. There's a team that have built it. There's a purpose for it, and it's a well-designed product. So at the end of the day, Coke has a low circulating supply compared to others, uses, uh, excuse me, proof of stake instead of proof of work. And, I, and that's, that is very important. So here, Cloak uses proof of stake, where consensus in Cloak can be reached based solely on the amount of coins in your wallet. So you don't have to actually go in and mine the coins. You just have to have enough coins in your wallet for X amount of time or stake them for a period of time. That's a pretty cool thing because it's changing the game, actually, uh, from what we normally see. Cloak offers true decentralization and anonymity to its users. I mean, at the end of the day, the blockchain is resting on four things. Anonymity, security, speed, and immutability. If you don't have those, you don't have a blockchain that's effective. Enigma and Cloak Coin have reached that particular level that we're looking for. Definitely one of my best picks as well. So right now it's sitting at $28. So if you're going to get it, you might want to get it fast because earlier it was, um, and this is December. So let's look at what was it earlier today? So about six in the morning, it was sitting at about, $28, and now it's at $28, $27, $27. So you're looking at about $28, $27. So it's a good time to get it because when it does, it's on Cryptopia, Mercantox, or Bittrex. Definitely a good time to get it. 
um, since it's, you know, about low as it's going to go. So you don't want to wait too long. Okay. So now that we've hit on some of the top ones in the business, let's take a look at some of our top tokens here. Ripple. It's trading 45,000 bitcoins in the 24-hour period. Ethereum doing 44,000 bitcoins in the last 24 hours. The good thing is Bitcoin is up by 1%. Ripple is down 2%. Now, obviously that doesn't mean a lot in the big picture, but what it says is Ripple has risen faster than Ethereum. More people are buying at a faster rate on certain markets or exchanges, and thus that that one has risen a lot more than Ethereum. Here's the beauty of Ethereum, which I'll tell you in a minute. Verge, as we know, Verge, uh, a couple of weeks ago, got mentioned on Twitter, and it flew through the roof. So Verge was sitting at about five to eight thousand percent in a two week period. And today it's at a negative 14 percent. Hmm. Enough said about that. Um, it's not in my top five, obviously. Bitcoin Cash still doing what it's going to do. Um, Tron is definitely in my top 10. I actually really, really like Tron. But I had to make a decision on what I believed would be um, the best thing going forward. Now, let me tell you that Tron has caught my attention because Tron is a decentralized content entertainment ecosystem. Um, Tron also, it can publish, store, and own data and share it across the blockchain. So Tron is this consolidated place just like the Sonom, you know, where you can actually use their platform, uh, kind of a Sonom and, and Lisk kind of combination. You can use their platform to develop and create your own decentralized apps, and, and encoders can uh, take advantage of that. So, so Tron is definitely a, a leader in this market as well. I see Tron doing good things. So, even though I picked the top five, being my top five, I think I mentioned my top five, which I talked about a few minutes ago. Um, Sonum, Cloakcoin, BAT, Basic Attention Token, Publica, Engine, and Lisk. Now, IOTA really is one of my favorites, um, but they've been having some, some challenges lately, so um, they're going to take a little time to recover. But when they do, it's on, like on, all right? So I'll talk a little bit about Ripple in a minute, but Tron, I think it's great. It's going to do great things. Uh, Stellar Lumens is at 32% up. That was one that I recently, a couple of days ago, definitely a buy. Um, Tron, definitely a buy. Litecoin, I like Litecoin. I didn't recommend it. It didn't make my top 10, but definitely I have some, but I just didn't recommend it. But so there are some challenges. I know recently, the founder um, actually decided to sell all of his Litecoin, which kind of was kind of weird. And I understood why he did it. But at the end of the day, I don't think it was the right move, no matter what was going on in the industry. So he did sell all of his uh, interest in the company. So Cardano. Cardano. I love Cardano. I think it's um, it's an up and coming. Uh, cryptocurrency, it's doing some good things, uh, but right now it's struggling to keep its head above water. Now it has increased, so it's doing about nine thousand Bitcoin, twenty-four hour period, which is still great, sitting at number eight. So definitely doing doing something right. Anyway, um, I looked at it a while back. Um, it was trading at about. Uh, 40 cent, 20 cent, 40 cent. It got all the way up to 60, got to 71, and then it went down to 40. So it, it's just fluctuating a lot. So I really 
waiting for it to level off and, and see what it offers. Um, so I haven't done a lot of research on it, but I've heard others do some research and talk about it. So, eh, you know, we'll see. Um, what's my other ones? My other ones. Um, I owe that. Like I said, I owe hit a, hit a rough spot. Um, still one of my top picks because I believe that I owe the Internet of Things, right? The Internet of Things is is something that is so incredible. If you can harness the logistics around managing properly the Internet of Things for our future, then you're going somewhere. And so the company sitting on the name Internet of Things are focused on creating a symbiotic relationship between things and humans. And so with that being said, they've created a faster process in time for their particular version of the blockchain called the Tangle Ledger. And so with that, the way to make it work with other things, Internet of Things, is you have to add sensors to pretty much everything around you in order for this to work. Now, it's a valid point. Um, you can use wireless. You can use, you know, line of sight. You can use a lot of different variations. But this is the next iteration of making Internet of Things and creating that relationship with human beings, trying to make it work. So you have Internet of Things. You have AI. You have AR, augmented reality. And you have this blockchain technology. Then on top of that, somebody creates this tangled ledger that is about speed. Ripple has created something alongside of a blockchain. Ripple is similar to OneCoin. They actually have something that is similar to a blockchain, but not exactly a blockchain. But it runs and it computes really in a similar fashion. That's why people categorize it as a blockchain. But Ripple has a network, and IOTA has the Tangle. They're not blockchains, but they're something similar, and they're very advanced technologies. OneCoin, IOTA, and Ripple are running on similar platforms, just not blockchains. So anyway, IOTA, I believe when they pull it together, they will be a powerhouse to be reckoned with. What is my other ones? I do have Zcash as well, just so you know. Like I said, list, top runner. Uh, it's number 26, but it's, t- it's a top contender. Redcoin. There are my Redcoin. It's in there, 15%. Redcoin has been a winner for me from day one. I have, um, when I got a tip on Redcoin, I dove in with both feet. And it has paid off over and over and over. So Redcoin is doing a great job. Redcoin is a social media currency type token, a reward type token for social media. So they're basically putting together platforms in order to work with the leading uh, social media uh, agencies in order to incorporate their particular token or coin as a reward coin or token for users in these social media arenas. So I think that's a great idea because everybody's going to have their connection with social media. We can't put our phones down. We can't put our computers down. We go crazy if we don't have our phones and just because we can't log into Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. So definitely a good move. I'm just waiting to see what their actual product is going to be. Um, but a lot of people are interested. They're doing about 2 million, uh, I mean, 2,000 um, or so Bitcoin uh, per 24 hours. So they're doing really good. And they're always up to 17, 15, 17%. Definitely one of my favorites right there. Stellar Lumens, we already talked about. Did we talk about Stellar? I think we did talk about Stellar Lumens, didn't we? Stellar Lumens. Hmm. Where is Stellar? Sea Coin. Monaco. These are two that I like. But Sea Coin is a storage, a data storage uh, concept. I'm, I'm just thrilled to death that they have a great concept. They're, they're, the pricing for Sea Coin. Sealcoin is about two cents. 
So it's still really, really reasonably priced, but it just hasn't taken off. And I think they have a great concept. I mean, data storage. I mean, where all this, all this computing power is going on. All of these transactions are happening. Well, when you start to put, um, deeds, land deeds, and trying to register land deeds, you're trying to register cars and, and different information that you don't want to get out. Um, Equifax obviously is a problem with your credit. So here is a way to take that store it into a data center. So data centers, I think, are going to be the next big thing uh, because the blockchain and the ledgers and the, and the other protocols, they're producing a lot of information. And when we start using it for the supply chain, when we start using it for voting, when we start using the blockchain for, um, you know, food distribution and, and for security uh, uh, validation and verification processes. All that data has to be stored somewhere. So I believe that the next iteration, and, and an honorable mention is for Bluezell, and uh, Bluezell is another company out of Singapore that's doing the same thing as Seacoin. And Storage, S-T-O-R-J, uh, I think it was one of the first that raised, like I mean, something like $200 you know, million or something in their uh, particular ICO. But the same thing, they're storing data. And MadeSafe is storing data. So there are companies out there that's doing this because they see a need for it. So see is the same thing, but they just haven't taken off. And I, and I think they, 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 I think they got a quality product. They just been struggling a little bit, but look for it to come back, um, in, in 2018. They'll get it right. Let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, I know what I had on my list. Yes, 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 yes. There's my bat. I love basic tokens doing some good stuff and. Let's see who else we got here. Made safe, like I said, that's uh, interesting. DNT is one that I invested in, and I do have. Um, this is interesting because District Go X. This is like an online community, like like for people to come together and actually vote on community um, rules or laws or policies that's being put in place. Um, so very interesting there. I'll keep an eye out on that. But yeah, it's, 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 it's always, I mean, it's always on the plus side. So something's going right. Here's ARC. Now ARC is sitting at 68, but ARC is always, ARC and Seacoin, these two, they're, they're struggling for some reason. Um, but ARC has, has made some announcements that I think will, uh, will give it, will give it a boost. Um, ARC, here's what ARC, I, I, you know, from, from what I understand, I did some reading on on what they were doing just so I could figure out, you know, where they headed with this. ARC actually decided to partner with or become part of a a business group in France. And so that gave a lot of legitimacy to blockchain technology and and, and cryptocurrency as well. And so I think that's a good thing. Um, Now, I don't know what else they've done beyond that because really hadn't seen anything. But previously they were they were talked about a lot as far as um you know the technology they were using um to create their products and, and items for blockchain uh support. So they do have a bridge between fiat currency and the real world and digital world. So they're putting all of that together as well. So um yeah they're doing all right, doing about 679 Bitcoin, 24 hours. Humanic is an interesting one. Um, XDN is the honorable mention that I have. I um, still think they're doing pretty good digital note. Uh, they're going up and down, up and down, but definitely got some uh, some good things going on. Decentraland, just like I talked about earlier with Engine, Decentraland is, is something that I believe um, has um, a lot of growth potential. And the reason being is it's online gaming. It's like an online Sim City, you know, 2.0. Um, they really take in creating a virtual city to another level. So I love that particular program and I see it, I see it being something viable. Think about the holidays, um, you know, kids, uh, or adults really that's acting like kids being a part of that particular, uh, following. 
So definitely keep an eye out for manna as well. EMC2, man, I got a story for that one. EMC2 been struggling. Um, they did an announcement that really did not do anything for their company. But when you read more into what Einsteinium is doing, they are more of a nonprofit foundation uh, that supports scientific incubators, uh, technology, and basically trying to help, you know, the, the unbanked uh, people with micro loans and things like that. So they're not really here to boost the price up just because, but they would really appreciate people supporting them in order for them to go ahead and, and do more work in the community. So they're doing really good here. It's first time it's been up to 27% in a very long time, but it's definitely one of my favorites um, that I do have on my list. And let's see, I think Substratum is going to kick in here soon. Engine is definitely one of my favorites. I love it. Uh, I'm doing great things. Um, burst, burst, there it is. Burst is always um, something that, I don't know, I, I, I don't know where I heard about it, but when I did, I jumped all over it. And the funny thing about Burst, though, it um, it's, it's one of those really unknown coins. And I was surprised because that coin, when I read about it, went to, you know, went to his website, read a little bit about it, and it is it is amazing some of the things that it's doing. So it definitely has my attention, and it should have your attention as well. But, yeah, Burst um, is somewhere. It disappeared, but um, wherever it is, Burst is, is a great coin. It's more of a security. Like I said, it has a, it's using the uh, the same safety or secure network uh, protocol as the token pay, which is the onion uh, ledger. And the onion ledger is supposed to be very, very secure. And so that's the, uh, that's what it's using. Well, anyway, um, I saw a burst, then, um, then I don't know what happened to it. So I'm not real sure how that happened but my eyes are definitely deceiving me because I don't see it and I saw it a few seconds ago but now I don't okay so anyway burst is definitely one of my forerunners there uh, mana is another uh, Tron definitely one like I said red coin and uh, Lisk Iota yeah top ones in, in my book now, you may be asking the question, that's really cool and all, but what about Ripple? <laughs> what about Ethereum? Well, to close out tonight, here's what I got to say about Ripple and Ethereum. Ripple has um, a lot of connections um, with top banks in Asia, Japan, Korea, South Korea, and so that's where most of the trading is being done with cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ripple, you know, Ethereum, and so on, Litecoin as well. So, yes, definitely keeping cryptocurrency afloat. And it took Ripple from $0.40 cent within two weeks all the way up to $2.26. Currently, it's sitting at about $1.95. So, yes, anybody that put their money into Ripple at 70 cent when I recommended it about two weeks ago. Uh, within three or four days, you would have tripled your money. And if you would have left it in there, it would have quadrupled. So, yes, there was a lot of people on Facebook saying, oh, my gosh, my, my you know, a friend of mine invested three grand in May 15. Okay, but you're happy? Because he could have made forty grand. If we just let a couple more, but Ripple definitely number one contender. I believe Ripple in the short term has some advantages over the other coins because one is established, it has great leadership. 
Uh, they're very visible, and they've been in the game for a while. It has a ripple network following, and has shown that it's capable of making a stand um, against the Bitcoin, the Ethereum, the Litecoin, the Dash, and the Stellar. So that being said, Bitcoin is definitely one to keep your eye on in the short term. And that's okay because Coinbase has some challenges because of the fees right now. But since it's a very easy platform to buy and sell the four top digital currencies, it's probably going to be around for a while. Now, I've heard that Coinbase is probably going to pick up Ripple and IOTA, which is going to be interesting. If they do, great. Um, I almost see them picking up Ripple because it makes sense. They already have Litecoin. They already have Ethereum. They already have Bitcoin. They already got Bitcoin Cash. So now they go ahead and pick up Ripple. The key is <clears throat> you might want to get Ripple before it hits the exchange uh, called Coinbase because that's going to cause the price to stabilize at a certain number, which will be higher than what you can get it right now. Um, there will be a lot of people buying in, so the price is already kind of settled right now. But I would say you might want to get it before it hits Coinbase. Now, Ethereum. Real quick about Ethereum. Ethereum is probably one of my favorites because and it should be anybody's, I think anybody can realize this is not the scientific stuff behind Ethereum. This is just plain common sense. Most of these coins out there that has this level of usability, which some people say that 2018 is going to be a focus on utility and usability. What can your coin do? What use case can you provide to me before I invest in your coin, your ICO, your business? your startup, the ones that win are probably going to be on a Ethereum blockchain. Why? Because of the smart contracts, because of the Ethereum fog, and Ethereum has a whole alliance of banks and leaders in the financial sector behind them that are like stakeholders, shareholders, sitting around a table trying to figure out how do we win this game. See, so Ethereum is, is doing exactly the same thing. They have companies that are offering opportunities for them as well. They're testing out new products and services with big banks and, and credit, credit card companies as well. So even though Bitcoin has been doing it, Bitcoin is always going to be the leader. So there's no reason to talk about it. It's, it's not going anywhere. But then you have Ripple that is, you know, associated with about 70 banks and running some tests and making sure that their thing works. Ethereum's doing the exact same thing, running the tests, doing the different um, assessments and things like that, um, trying to make sure that they have a viable product that can work in the real world. The same thing is happening with Stellar Lumens and IOTA. They are actually in talks, participating in trial runs with banks and financial institutions and, and IBMs and, 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 and you know, uh, Microsoft and and Virgin uh, uh, Enterprises. These are legitimate cases that are happening right now. The case that Verge has made is they have what they call the Wraith Protocol, where they can turn on uh, a public ledger and they can turn on a private ledger. And so that's pretty interesting. That's pretty exciting. Um for some people out there that want the anonymity, that want the security, want the privacy. So the Verge, yes, it's always going to have its place. Uh, it's, it's right now, it's done what the market does. It corrected it. It took it down a little bit. People are, you know, going a little soft, but it'll come back. I mean, it has a really good product. And as long as it works, they just, just, it just hit the market. They just put it out there. So people are like, hey, let's see if it works. Let's see what it does. And when it shows that it's a viable product, then the, 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 the stock price is going to go back up. So right now, though, XLM is running things. They are running things. They are doing a great job because Stellar um, has the same leadership as Ripple. 
Okay, so the same people um, that produced Ripple came back and actually helped produce Stellar. And this happens so long. A lot of the cryptocurrencies, the same leadership is the brains behind a variety of these coins. So one's more about security and other ones are more about speed. And they have banks that are looking at them as well. So if you had to choose something right now, um, you know, to put to put your focus on, I would say Ethereum is a winner in the long run. Ripple is a winner short term. It's going to go back up here shortly. And XLM, uh, Stellar Lumens, I believe, um, is kind of the forerunner in this first 90 days. Well, hey, I could do this all night, but I am not going to drive you crazy with all of this. But what I will close out with is there are a few ICOs that I'm looking at and for 2018. And at least for the first quarter, these are the ones that are key. Uh, if you're interested in ICOs, here's what I believe will be um, the ones to beat. So right now we're looking at um, Rentberry. Rentberry is a very good one. We're looking at Rentberry as an ICO in 2018. I think it just closed, so it's 2017, but we should have their coin in 2018. As far as ICOs go that have already closed, Cryptarium is my top ICO for 2017. Hands down, I believe it's the best ICO in 2017. Um, Kasha is another payment system. I think they came up with a great solution, and they're doing great things. It closed in 2017. In Vion, it opened and it should be closing soon. It's a mobile mining unit that takes the energy at the source, the actual energy grid. Um, so they've come up with a way to work that out, which mining is all about energy. So I believe they have a very, very good plan. Uh, low key, low key is to support inventions and the whole registration, um, um, the uh, trademarking, uh, you know, these these particular things to protect the rights, the intellectual property as well of the inventor or the artist or the creator of that particular uh, product or service or, or instrument uh, of, of art. Um, expertise is coming as well, paying for expert advice. Blue Zell, like I said, Blue Zell is a um, company that is a data a data center uh, for storing data, and uh, so I think that's a real powerful powerful thing that we look forward to in the coming uh, months. So I'm going to close out with one of the things that I've been working on, and this is what I just provided you with over our time together. The top 10 cryptocurrencies that I believe have some viability, have some growth potential. Like I said, at the end of the day, I am not, and I repeat, I am not your financial advisor. I am not your investment advisor. I am an enthusiast of cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, AI, AR, and Internet of Things. I personally have studied, personally, I've gained information that I personally put forth effort in order to understand what I am investing in. And now I have uh, got a return on about six figures of um, digging into this particular technology. And I'm happy to start imparting that to you because I've gotten the results. So the first thing I want to do is let you know it is time to go. Um, we've done this for a while tonight. It is 2018. It is the first video that I put out for 2018, first webinar. And the video just didn't come up, so I have to put my picture up there. <laughs> 
So remember, do your research, do your due diligence, and you decide where you put your money. I don't decide that. And uh, I applaud you for kind of hanging in here with me. And I would say that these are some of the key, but there are so many more out there that can do great things. So learn what you can about blockchain technology, Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, augment reality, and cryptocurrency. The altcoins are going to take over in 2018. I say that today, and I hold on to that, and I truly believe that for 2018. This is the year of usability. If there's a coin, if there's an ICO, and it has a viable use, then it will be king in this coming year. It is your time to get on board. Join us in our introductory course, seminar style, our intermediate course, and our advanced course, along with access to our Facebook group, private group, access to continuous tips and emails and videos on specific coins and what they do and why they are uh, good opportunities for us. This is your opportunity to change the trajectory of your legacy. Doing it now, doing it right, away from the scammers, and doing it with a level head and a focused mind. I'm your friend. I'm your coach. I'm your educator. I'm Rashid Hill. I value our time together. So I thank you kindly for being part of my future today. Thank you. See you next time.